So let's discuss data driven testing in this video. So data driven testing for the API. So what basically we are going to do is like we are stop doing the mark coded values. What we are going to do is like we are going to take the values from some Excel sheet or CSV file and then that values will be going to pass it into the input. I mean the request. So in the request we will be passing the inputs through Excel sheet or CSV file. We will be reading from a CSV and Excel file but we will be passing it into the request. So basically for this we need to read the values in using the Groovy script. We will uh, put a Groovy script set and we will call the data from the CSV file. We will read the data from CSV file or Excel file using two methods that are available, two classes that are available in Java. As Java is rebuilt into uh, this Groovy. So we don't need to require to import uh, all the Java package or anything. This actually simplifies the available classes from Java. So buffer reader and file reader are the two classes that are utilized here. So buffer reader and file reader. So file reader what it does is like it will be reading the input from these various files and then it will be putting it in the input stream. The form of character. Now what it will do is like uh, buffer reader will do uh, read line by line from the file reader. In the input stream it will read and it will forward it to the test input. So now let's see the function character. So as already we had done it, I have already had this done. So I created a, a new project with the data driven script. So I uh, calculated uh, data driven test and then I created data driven script and under that I created data driven test step. And under that I added one test step. The test step is the add operation we are going to uh, trigger the request. So this is the request. So I put three assertions. By default, these are the assertions that are available that comes with the test step. And then I created a new Groovy script. Groovy script step. So I add step and then Groovy script. So I named it as data driven test. So using this, we need to call the data from the Excel file. So how we'll do? So this is the first line. You can see my car. This is a line to read. Excuse me. This is the line to read the data from the Excel file or the CSV file. So basically, I created one Excel file or CSV file. Oh, I had done it. I'll show you. So uh, I'll open an Excel file okay. and then I provide the inputs. And then while I save, I'll be saving the format. Okay. It is a single value. First, I will uh, teach how to read a single value and then we will go with multiple values how to read it. Four values is So, I want you to store it as a CSV file. So here I want to show it. Um, and then I want to show it as CSV file. Oh. CSV. Second click here. Comma secret to delimit. And you can save it. And it will be coming in this format. So since I already saved it, I'm not just doing it once again. You can see the format I just saved. Microsoft Excel format separated values. So let me open this. So these are the input values I have So these values I need to read it and I need to store it from variable. And then I need to utilize those variables in as an input to the add add function. Add script. So in the add request, I need to dynamically get the values. So B I was hard coding, here I will be 
getting it from the actual field and I'll be iterating and I'll be iterating the request as many times as we are having the test data. I'm having four test data, 10, 20, 30, 40, so that values of test data I'll be iterating four times each request. So let's see how to do it. So this is a script to read data from the sheet, the file, line by line. I'll be explaining this time. So in here we can see like this is the part of the file, and file reader is going to read the file. It is going to put the encryption from the encryption buffer. It is going to take the values, and we are going to show it in one variable. So now we want it to read this data line by line, the input string. So what we are doing is that we are having one method available in buffer reader that is read line. So using this method we will be reading the data line by line and then we are storing it in variable called test data. Okay. And now we want it to iterate in a loop and until and unless we have some value we want it to read. So when we want it to stop, when there is no data, that means when it is null. So I'm iterating over this Excel, so this CSV file, until and unless it is not equal to null. So there is some data until then I want it to iterate it. Okay, and then I'm going to print the value each and every time I'm iterating. And then I'm looking for if there is a next value. It's like I just look. I'm iterating to the next line. I'm going to the next line and reading the value. And then I'm verifying it. It's not equal to null. So this executes until it's not equal to null. And once it is null, it terminates. So let's see. Let's execute and see what how we get it. So let me just clear off this long. And then let me execute. And see. So you can see. This is just maximize this. So we can see here about 10, 20, 30, 40. So these are the values which are fed from our input file which we want to iterate over. So now I want you to pass this value, I want you to store it in property, and then I want you to use that property in the request. So for that, as we had already discussed how to parameterize the values in the request. That is either storing it at context level, sorry, at test to level or project level or test case level. So for that we need to use a context object and we need to set the property at the level. So this is a line. So context not set property of this is a variable I want you to utilize. I want you to set to for int a, I want to create a variable. This is the key value pair. So I want to use a variable int a, and in that int a, I want to store test data. So I'm storing this as test data into variable int a. And then I want to reutilize this value of int a into my request. So for that, I need to go to request and in here dollar for the hash. Since I'm not showing it the global value, global uh, I'm not showing it as a global property, I'm using hash. Since I'm I'm showing it as uh, it at project level or test root level or test case level, then I I need to use hash. If I'm showing it the global value, global property, then I don't require to use hash. So now since I'm showing it as uh, I'm not showing it the global level, so I'm using hash. Next, come back, next, come back. And then I need to run this particular test step. So for that, I need to navigate to the test case and under test case, the test steps, under the test case, which test step we want to execute. Add is the test step I want to execute. So execute it. Show it. We are navigated and we have shown this navigation in a particular variable and then we are calling the run method on top of that.
So for every this for the first iteration, this test data will be stored in int a, and then it will be set over in the request, and then we are running it, and the next time we are iterating it again, the next value 20 will come, 20 not equal to null, and then we are setting it in a, then we are utilizing in add request, and then again we are running it, out will come, and then again we are verifying whether it is equal to null, no, 30 is there, so 30 is passed. Yes, 30 is not equal to null, and then set the property as 30, int a is 30, and then run it, and then again next read it, and until it is not equal to null, run for all the values this particular test step. So let's see what's the output. Let me clear up the last test. So 10, 20, 30, 40 went and then it got executed for the four times. But every individual test the request we are not able to see. Only the last request. For the last request, what is the response we obtain? We can see. But whether it is pass or fail for each and every request, we can identify and this running you can see like it will show a green color indication every time. Let's see once again. Concentrate on this green color over here on the add request. So it's blinking green. Now let's see the last response. What do you want? It says 60. So what is the request we are given? 20. And last value is 40. 40 plus 20 is 60. So our, our response is 60. So now let's get in into that editor uh, clip and let's store the response and print the response values each and every time we try to over. Okay. So for getting the response from each and every iteration what we wanted to do is like we want to store it in some variable and we wanted to print the value of the response that is it in uh, that is obtained in this particular tag as well. so how to get it so we already discussed we need to use one more class it is, uh, I mean, uh, a group script class. It is like a camel holder. We need to use a particular class. For that, we need to import the packet and then we can utilize that one. It is used for holding the complete XML response. And then using that, we can read that particular node value. So let's see how to do that. <coughs> XML folder, new XML folder. We need to, uh, we are having one method in context of this that is called as expand. This is used for expanding the response, and then that response we need to uh, pass it to XML holder. And then for using XML holder, we can just uh, call the node value and we can read that value. So let's see how to do that. So context is all. Context of expand. Response we are passing to a particular value. And then we want it. OK. 
can use some other name convention. Okay, and we need to sort it in some other variable. So it's in like another folder. All that is equal to, and then we can sort it. And then what we need to do is like we need to get the response using context node expand and then from which test step what is that we want to do response so we need to write like this to dollar followed by test step name followed by as or we wanted to call the response we want to get the response and we want to show the response so in this test step this response this test step response we want so we need to call it like this and then this expanded response we need to pass it over here to pass it in the form of XML. XML. So for this, as I told, we need to import one package because like this import com dot uwear dot soap uwear dot support dot XML and dot this is the package which we need to import. For this to work and once you obtain this one then you need to get the node value let's see and we want to show that in competitive version so get node value top so which we wanted to get the node value and you need to write the x path for that to close so in address this, but in address response, we want to get address it value. Since we want to get address it value, we need to write like the response star or then address it not this token. So this is what we basically want. And we need to store it in some Variable or directly we can put it dot dot info and we can print it directly. So now for each and every execution, for each and every request that is sent, we'll be getting the response and we are holding the response in XML folder and this, uh, we are getting the node value. And after holding it in XML folder, we'll be getting we'll be using the node value method, get node value method, and then from the node value method, we will be passing this particular tag. So it will be reading the value of this particular tag and then we are going to print it. So now we will see for each and every input what is the output we got. So let's run and check it. So this thing is. Let us run one more time. Line number 10, we are running some, oops, some issue will work with. Okay. This was in small text. This was in capsule text as well. So, let me clear it. So let's see. Them. First time ten is the input. Ten is the input right? And the OPPO key we are setting it. And then we are running it. We are getting the response. Mm 
Let's put it out there. 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 Let me just do it. Okay. The issue is the format which we are storing is not proper. So we are using very poor format to store it. So that's giving some trouble. So I'm giving values. These are the values I wanted to input into my request. So we'll go here. We're storing clear words. We're storing in CSV UFT read format. At the point of time, you can see that question mark comes up and the string value read for the first value. So at the point of time, it was failing. So that's the reason it was failing. So this is not the correct format for CSV. So we need to store it in CSV DBM tree. All these input huh? and we need to kill double slices, read it correctly. Okay, so it and now let's see. So you see the question mark is not there, so the input that is right. So here's the problem. Okay. So that's the reason. If you're having the question mark, it is not a proper format. So we can show it here. So the remote is not fully valid. Next time if I do, and if I give question mark followed by some 10, what will happen? It is not the proper format that we need to input. So that's the reason it is failing. Mm 
knowledge benefit to Ruby script. So now let me clear it out. So this is the input 10 plus B is 20, 30. So 20 is A and the hardcoded value is 20 for B. So the response is 40, 30 plus 20, 50, 40 plus 20, 60. So you can see output for each and every request. Okay. We will see further reports and all those things. We see for each and every individual request how the response was successful or not. But in here we cannot see each and every response. Just we need to see it in this green color to close off. For every response, every request, we get the response green color highlighted. So if something is there, then we get in red color. Okay. So this is how uh, to do a data driven test using a single value. In the next video, we will see how to iterate using multiple values. So we will iterate over there for int a and int b, two values will be reading from this ESP file. And then we will be driving the test script as an input. And then we will be iterating, we will be running, uh, we will be executing the test steps on the test. Thank you, that's all.